Well, it's 10.59. That's close enough, right? Or I can just show this cat for another minute. This is Pixel. She's a kitty cat. She's my little baby kitty kitty. Okay, she does not like that. She does not like being held. Some of the other cats do. Technically, still 10.59. I don't know how punctual you want to be. Da, 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 da. Okay, now this is awkward. Uh, so I don't know who all is watching. Hello, Pro True. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's 11 o'clock now. So this is the first of a um, series I'm going to try to do where every month I make an open source game. And so it'll start with like a planning stream. I guess I should do this at the beginning of the planning stream. Um, and then at the end, there'll be like a let's play the game and talk about what we learned type of stream. And then in the middle, it won't be streams, it'll be like nicely edited episodes of information about how I went about implementing it. So not just like sit here and watch me code, but um, like, I don't know, here's how I implemented the maps, or here's me doing the game art and how I do my game art, and stuff like that. So through that entire process of making a game in a month. And then the games will be pretty simple, um, kind of like inspired by classic arcade games, or like, you know, it could be anything, um, but that's kind of the scope I am thinking of. So for this first project, excuse me, um, I went ahead and decided to make a clone of Venture, so I just thought I'd kind of show off what Venture is, and then through this stream today we can figure out um, basically what's going to be the aesthetic, what kind of gameplay features do we want. Um, I'm not just making like a remake of Venture because that's not my IP. <laughs> so just making up new things. Um, I had a thought and I lost that thought. Oh yeah. Um, so nobody voted in the Patreon poll, so I'll also get uh, people's input on which library and language to use, and if no one has any ideas, I guess I'll just start on the game maybe tomorrow and figure out what I feel like using if no one has any input. Um, and thank you to my one patron, my friend Vespero. Uh, thanks for your support. <laughs> Okay, so first off, let's just look at um, Venture. So this was also an arcade game. I played the ColecoVision version, so if you want to go into the whole story on that, um, there is a cool lady um, who does new ColecoVision games. So she programs them, and then um, she, like, I don't even know how it works, but she puts them in a a ROM and like a physical cartridge and builds these cartridges and mails them out. So um, she ended up making a ColecoVision clone of Pick and Sticks. I bought that. I bought a ColecoVision. And I also bought Zaxxon and Venture. And I actually ended up really liking Venture. So let's just play it. If I can remember the buttons. It just kind of sits at the screen for a while. Okay. We'll do that. So, it's a little bit like Berserk, but I feel like was Berserk maps um, procedurally generated? I don't know. But I'm a little dot right here, so there's kind of like an overworld view, kind of like the castle, and then there's the inner room views. And you have a bow and arrow and you shoot. It's kind of like a stick shooter, except you don't have two separate controls for your aiming and moving. You just aim in the direction you're moving at. 
And so you go in these rooms, you're stealing treasure, I guess. I don't know what the technical story of this game is, but we'll be making our own story, even if it's just lame game story style. That was not what I meant to do. I'm sure those snakes are alive still. Um, so you have a limited amount of time to get the treasure in each room before those overworld, those guys show up and start chasing you, so that's also kind of like Berserk. Um, and then this appears to be the only room with like an environmental trap. So you have to kind of sh shimmy your way through there and not hit the blue lasers or whatever, you know, whatever you can figure that is. Kill these raindrop guys. Grab that. I don't have to kill everyone, but we're going to anyway. And then that level is complete. There are three um, main world sections. I don't really know what to call them. Levels. So you basically just go through all of these and they have various little differences. Like most of them are just rooms with the enemy already in there. Sometimes the enemies don't show up until you collect the treasure. I have no idea what I'm even collecting. Um, okay, I'm over here. And... Okay. <laughs> so, I don't... Yeah, I kind of want to look up the story. I'm not even sure what this is supposed to be, but... You're just this cool, happy guy going through a castle and murdering everybody. And there are different skill levels, which I've only ever played on skill level number one. No! Haha. -ha. And I will show some video of the... Um, the original platform I think is just arcade game. I will show a video of that. Um, I've never seen it in a arcade before. Also, this room has no enemies until you collect the thing. And I really like these crab guys that have, like, sad claws. I don't know if you can see that. But their claws do not look happy. Okay, so I'm gonna show the last area also, just to have footage of it so we can reference. But, so one thing we'll have to do is figure out, like, what's gonna be the, the setting for our clone. Um, what kind of characters are there? What kind of monsters will there be? What what am I collecting? Why am I collecting it? Where am I even? I don't even know. Like, I could t uh, possibly take, like, an, a game I already made and make, like, oh, this is Rarinth, except- oh, those guys disappear. Or this is Lynxion, I don't know. This is a game with a story. It, uh, definitely a very important story. Don't hit those. I didn't realize these guys teleport. I'm gonna... Okay. Maybe I'll save them for last. Um... And yeah, overall. Uh, I mean, gameplay, we could figure out whether we want this to also be just directional movement and then shoot to sh aim and sh shoot in the direction you're looking at currently. These guys are all all over the place. Get out of here. That was lame. It gives you a lot of lives, so that's nice. Um, okay, we'll go in here again. Do not teleport in front of me. Oh, that was the Cyclops room. I wasn't even- I didn't even realize- I didn't even realize there was text on the top of the screen that tells you. <laughs> so, I think this is my last life, so I'm gonna quick save just in case I do something like that. I'm gonna go back around. Okay, get in here. Kill bats. 
I can also leave the room if uh, things don't spawn in a good way for me. Okay. And then come over here, grab the chalice. And that's really it. Um, the only difference now is it's going to repeat the levels, but with different items to collect. I don't know if it gets any harder, but this could be the sort of thing like... I don't know, maybe I could just uh, create art and then put it in tiled and then everyone just like can make some levels? Oh, more lives. Um, or I could just make some levels. Uh, that was... that was dumb. Okay, anyway, so that's that's the venture game. Um, I'm gonna put on some video of the arcade version while I keep talking. Um, and then we'll just do some sketching and stuff. So, the arcade version, nicer graphics, some animation, the enemies like deteriorate while you're, um, while they're dead. This area, like, the walls degrade and you can actually shoot through them and if I touched these in the ColecoVision version, they would I would die immediately. Um. Oh, and then there's like a nice transition between the rooms, like that. So that's kind of cool. And then each room has like a song. The font is fancy. I like this font. Um. We could put some cheat codes in there, because this person clearly is cheating, because the collision detection stopped working in this play. But the maps are here all the same. Uh, we'll make new maps based on whatever the theme of the game we choose is. So, yeah. Just fancier. So, yep. And then now it's just, you know... What do we want to make? Um, so, let me cut those. I just figured we'd start sketching stuff. Um, let me also go ahead and open up the my itch.io page. So, if any, if nobody has ideas for anything, I was thinking that the gameplay kind of works with my old Rarenth game, where it's kind of top-down and there are maps, but then it could be made more of this arcade style. Or if you're going in castles stealing stuff, I know there's no story in this game. Technically, she's stealing these bo baubles from castle? <laughs> castle? So, I don't know. I could just make a sequel to any either of these games, but otherwise... I don't know, we gotta figure it out. So, if we think about it and look at the... Did I close the YouTube? That would have been useful for, for reference, but in the original game... Oh, I have to adjust my tablet. Um, there's just a dude with a smiley face and his bow and arrow just gleefully killing everybody. Actually, let's look up Venture as well, so if that comes up. <laughs> the Adventures Venture video game. Gameplay. You're equipped with a bow and arrow and you explore dungeons with rooms and hallways. There are large hall monsters. Um, there's also something like the Evil Auto from Berserk. Winky is the guy's name? That's a terrible name. Um, I think there's a cat battle going on. Not a cat battle. A cat standoff. I hear some growling. Uh, but otherwise there's not really any story. Look at this art. That's our protagonist. That guy is ugly. <laughs> And then I guess these are the hall monsters and some of the monsters from the other area, so okay, weird. Uh, so it's supposed to be dungeons originally. Oh man, my tablet keeps disconnecting so it keeps going back to um, being mapped to both screens. Oops, that's not right. 
instead of just one screen. So originally it was a dungeon and collecting treasure. I might have to break up this cat battle. Where are you? Get out of here. <laughs> um, and really no other story besides that. As from what I can tell, the main hero's name is Winky. Yes, yeah, smiley faced. You you are the round smiley faced man named Winky. So obviously, clearly a lot of thought was put into the lore of this game. As was true of every game in the 80s, right? Um, so, if we did something like Barrenth, and it could just be the dinosaur- oh, dang it, I keep unplugging this. This is annoying. I will have to find a better USB cable. Um, it could be the dinosaur from Barrenth, and you're a dinosaur going through the suburbs looking for your eggs, or something like that. Because that's what the original Rarinth game is about. You are finding your long lost eggs. Um, I had like a story written for that, but I ended up like, I never finished that game, but I still love it a lot. Or um, if we did like Linkseon with that orange haired girl that shoots, shoots lasers out of her neck. Um, also an early game of mine when I was learning. Just just starting to learn game dev. Yeah, rough, rough drawing. Um, she's supposed to be a thief, so that kind of fits with the theme anyway. And then I get to draw her and make her very cute, and we can go steal things from people, like a, a chalice, steal from the bourgeoisie, destroy their bird spies, um, you know, that sort of thing. But if anyone else has any ideas for what kind of game would be good for, here's a kind of overworld map, here's different rooms of whatever sizes that you go into, um, you know, just basically what's a, a skin this game could wear to justify its existence. I mean, I'd like to have some sort of even kind of like written in the manual style story. I don't know, characters that I think are cool or something. Um, oh, also we need hall monitors. I mean hall monsters. That's what I think. It, it could be like a Harry Potter style game where you're sneaking through a castle, going to different classrooms to steal ingredients for potions or something. And maybe that could upgrade your potions as you uh, steal that stuff. So Really, I am also looking at um, the IRC, if anyone's talking in there, and I'm no one's talking in the Discord, but I have that over here too, so I'm basically watching three chats, if anyone has ideas. Um, otherwise, while people are thinking about that, another thing is what language and library. Um, so I've used a lot of different languages in libraries before, so I'm really kind of open to whatever. Um, I tend to like writing in C++ the most, but since this game is going to be like limited in scope and I'm writing it from scratch, I'm not like writing a framework to go with it for reusability and all of that, um, I'm okay with anything. Uh, I could do Python with Pygame, I've worked with that quite a bit. Pi game. Um, I've done C++, I've worked with Allegro, that was my first library. I did some SDL, I've done a lot of SDL, I've done some SFML. Um, and then I think I put Lua on that list, I've worked a lot with Gideros, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's like a, a word that's hard to pronounce and I don't know <laughs> what it is. Um, there's also Love 2D. I've used that a little bit. It, I don't know if it has classes available. Gideros at least gives you classes to work with and inheritance. 
Um, I tend to prefer my game development to have classes, because that just makes things easier on me. That's how I think in terms of design. Um, otherwise, there's Java. I could use um, Greenfoot, which is like a educational software for making games with, but I've done it a lot since we've used that in the classes I've taught. Um, I've used libgdx in the past, but it's been a very long time. Um, I would probably go with C++ and SFML, just because I feel like that would be the easiest C++ thing to do. Um, but also, you know, maybe Python and Pygame is pretty good because it's a lot easier to just get started and you don't have to write as much boilerplate, at least I feel. But they're going to be pretty similar because I'm still going to have to like write the classes and you know implement all the gameplay logic because I'm just doing this all like without an engine or anything. Um, at some point, uh, what is what what is the? I could learn the Godot engine, which I've messed with a little bit in the past, but. Um, I basically never even wrote picket sticks in it. Uh, you know, if people really wanted me to learn Unity, I could basically like learn things, learn, and then make that part of the video tutorials during the month and be like, this is what I did to learn this. Uh, also, another option for language is JavaScript. I've written a lot of skipped script. I've written a lot of games with just that and HTML5. Um, it's not my favorite. It's really weird to write games in JavaScript. Like, it's kind of ugly in my opinion, but it's doable and I've done it. I've done it quite a bit. Um, and I don't know, what else is there? Like, I haven't ever touched Unreal. Uh, I've used Unity a little bit, like I can build an island and put a camera on the ma the island, but otherwise I don't know how to make like 2D games or anything. Um, I don't know how to do 3D modeling, that would be something I would like to learn to do, but I don't think I have time to do that in a month-long game. Hmm, what other languages? Uh, like I, I know C Sharp, but I don't even know, I guess there's Mono Game? or mono or something. Um, what else? Do, what other languages do people use? Those are the, mo the main ones, right? So <clears throat> I would probably... I like these. These are my favorites. Um, I'm really okay with any of these C++ libraries because I've used all of them quite a bit, uh, but SFML is based on C++, so I would go with that. These are written with C, so that you have to end up dealing with the memory management more. Um, yeah, because they don't like auto-free their own things. Um, Pygame's really easy. I could do Greenfoot. I would like to do some Greenfoot videos eventually, um, but more of like a, like any teacher could use these Greenfoot tutorials to teach their class how to intro to make games. So those are, those are the tech things, unless other people have uh, suggestions, but that's all I can think of right now. Um, but let me open up my personal web page and I have a list of old games I made. Projects. So oh, I haven't finished this but oh I could use Visual Basic 5 but it's been a very long time since I've used Visual Basic 5. Um, my first set of games I first started with Power Basic uh, then I used Visual Basic and then I use C++ and Allegro, and then I wrote, I think this is C++ and SDL, this is Java and libgdx, both of these are. This is Lua and Love2D, this is just plain C++ if we wanted to make a text adventure. Um, libgdx, 
This is with Gideros and Lua. This is Gideros and Lua. That is just Android's SDK directly. Um, boop -a -doop -a -doop. These, which have no screenshots, were HTML5 and JavaScript, C++ and SDL, Gideros and Lua. Oh yeah, and RinP. We could also use that if, but it wouldn't really work out for what this project per se. You can implement Pygame code into RenP. So if we ever wanted to make like a visual novel with mini games, uh, I could do that. It would take some research because sometimes it's hard to find resources about RenP. RenPy, sorry, I just want to say P. <laughs> um. Yep. And then this was Python Pygame, so far. And I've made some various frameworks that I won't be using for these projects, but I might reference them if I need specific stuff like a UI library, because I've implemented UI libraries for games a billion times, and you know, I'll show how the steps work, but I'm not gonna be a newbie at that. Oh, also, here is Pick and sticks for the ColecoVision! Whee! Whee! Yay! Well, let's see. Character settings weapon. I already mentioned Vespero, my friend. Oh, and I guess while we're also sitting here too, um, I just wanted to acknowledge my friend, my internet friend, who used to always come to my streams and um, just, you know, was a nice person and I just communicated with online, but um, my friend who went by Afrocuban64 or Moxie Torres, um, he passed away in September um, just from like a bad reaction to medication and not going to the hospital or the ER. Um, so I miss him and yeah. So thanks dude for being my friend. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's think about happier things again. Why are these people causing mischief? I don't know. What sounds cooler? Dinosaurs in the suburbs, or being a, a cute anime girl thief. Let me again open up the screenshots. That's not great art. I mean, I. Did I make these in 2008? 11 years ago. I'm 31 now, so I was probably 20 when I made these. But you could be this cute lady who has baubles that she <laughs> balances on her head and shoots lasers from her neck. Let me see if I have the games on my computer. Games! I have this one for Linux. Oh, that that was full screen. So this is Rarinth, the original. Well, this is modified so two people can play it. <clears throat> because I've shown off this game at different maker fairs and stuff and kids like to play it and they usually have a sibling with them. But this one's just going around collecting stuff. So, you know, it's kind of like Venture, a little bit. Um, yay, egg! Just collecting your missing eggs. And then... Uh, this one, I don't know if I'll be able to run it in Linux. Um, run? Run this program. Do I have wine installed? I don't know what that is. Okay, that's probably not gonna run. Um, I lost the source code for this eons ago, so I can't recompile it for different platforms. So that's also a shame. But th I think it would be cool to take like this as my very first platformer and make like a different genre of game. Um, so similarly, like you know, Overwatch is a player versus player team-based hero shooter. And then Overwatch 2 is going to be a different genre of game. 
uh, player versus environment thing, and then you could just, you know, make a different genre of game with the same characters. I don't know. I'm not original. Um, but we might do that. I guess castle graphics would be pretty easy to make. Oh, I did not mention, but any graphics that I make for uh, this monthly project, I will be also making um, just public domain. So those game graphics, tile art, and all of that will be usable by you if you want to. So castles are, you know, a good thing to have because that's a pretty um, reusable style of thing. Um, Briarinth was set in the suburbs, which sometimes you see games based in modern day, like especially if they're inspired by um, the Mother series or Earthbound. But I don't know if it'd be as popular. I don't know. Plus, who wants to play dinosaurs? I mean, dinosaurs are cool. Mm -hmm. Very much like Skip. Heroes of Might and Magic 2. I've heard of that, but I'm not familiar with it. Apparently I can play the game online. Is that because it's from DOS days? Oh. I like that style too. I love DOS game, uh, like, art. It's just so cool. Yeah, so this is a bit more like a realistic style than my normal thing, but yeah, I could do like castle art and then like some terrain art, like maybe the first world in the game is like outside the castle and you're like working your way to the castle or down the labyrinth or maybe there's a castle garden I don't know we'll figure it out as we go um also let's see there's about four rooms and about three worlds in the original adventure so about 12 levels plus the outer area so I think that's reasonable as well so, let me open up LibreOffice and uh, Venture Game Clone Ideas. And we'll just throw this over in my notes. So, um, like art, environment, art, character art, oh, it has a, a Windows build and a DOS build. That was always really cool too, just when things came for different platforms and had different changes based on what you could run. <sighs> So environment art, let's say like some outdoorsy, like um, mostly castle themed, um, castle gardens, but also interior, throne room. Let's say you go into like just any room in the castle, like a kitchen, so you still stuff polygon char char characters. Um, Throne room, kitchen, um, the dungeon can be like its whole, its own thing. Um, throne room, treasure room, eh, different things. Maybe there's a wizard room. Cats, 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 be nice. In I mean, that would make it easy. It would just be like, uh, castle guards patrolling. And if you take too long in a given room, then they come in and try to kill you for stealing things from the castle. Now in every room in Venture, uh, it was like a cyclops room and, uh, different things. 
Just a second. Come here. Don't just sit at the door hissing at the other cat. Just go somewhere else. <clears throat> I know. It's unfair. Um, so it could be, I guess, like, Tower and Wall's room. I lost the context of that because I was thinking of cats. I mean, we'll do like castle walls as art tile sets. Yeah. Um, I figure probably like grass and stuff would be the most kind of stereo. Ah! Okay, she's upset. Just hang out right there. Yeah, that's true. Oh, we could make it... Well, that'd be a lot of art, maybe, for one month. But it would be cool to have... Um, yeah, instead of different uh, floors of the castle, it could be, like, different castles you're looting from. But that might be too much art for one month. So that could always be added on more later. So that would be cool. Um, yeah. So I'll make a note of that. Um, possible additions later. Different castles with different themes, styles of guard, etc. Yeah. And then I could have them all speak different languages, and then, yeah. I think that'd be really cool, but that would be like, oh, people like this game, let's add some more to it. Just ignore her. Um, okay, so what would be in the rooms? Because I don't really want to say like you're gonna go in there and just murder castle staff. Like if you happen to go in the kitchen and that's the room with all of the chefs, like don't don't kill them. They're just doing their job. Um, maybe they have enchanted things guarding the castle, or. Mm, let's see. Because it'd be really boring if it was just a bunch of guards that you had to fight with your laser neck. Your laser. I don't know. She wears a choker, and when I originally programmed the game, um, I don't have it. You don't see it here because it's sprite work. Oh, you don't see it there either. Well, in... I've retconned it, I guess, since then, but she would shoot lasers out of her neck. Um, and when I originally programmed it, I basically just made the laser come from there. Uh, like, no matter what angle you were aiming at. And so that was weird, so I guess that's why I always put her in like a red choker afterwards. So we can keep using that. She's a thief with a uh, laser beam. Um, or maybe you, as you collect different treasures. Maybe some treasures are different weapons. I don't know. We'll see how far we get with the scope of this. Um. <laughs> Let me also... I'm just gonna open this back up. Oh, it loaded my save. If I click out, it'll pause? Cool. Eh. No, don't. Okay. See, the Winky is sad because a bat touched him. Um, maybe we could have. Eh, eh. I won't get too in depth with each of these. But I do. I can't think of a good thing for there to be in each room. Beep -boop. I mean, I guess there's plenty of stuff that's valuable in a castle, like they have fancy silverware, right? I already said that. <coughs> we weapon could be knife throwing. Let's see. Come on. 
Let's do level 4 skill. Oh, they just move very fast. <laughs> so here's the goblin room. These raindrop guys are goblins. They're too fast for me. still just thinking about what should be in each room that you have to fight because in this game like they're all they mostly are pretty simple but they have different behaviors somewhat um, and some rooms are empty until you collect the thing and some rooms um, have environmental traps um, you could have castle guard with sword axe um, yeah, and then there could be a boss as well. Like, I would at least put a boss at the end of, like, three levels, so that even if we were repeating levels over and over, that there'd be some split up. Um, but probably if I had 12 levels, I'd be just be like, this is the end of the game. You fight the boss and then you're good. Um, but yeah. And then the main character. I guess that would just be her. Where's my thing? We'll just copy paste her. Oops. That goes there. And no wrap. <laughs> And, okay. Yeah, I could probably think of different treasures and stuff. So, um, where's this? Over here. Create a new sheet to draw on. And save it here. Ideas 2. So you start the game, where's my mouse cursor? There it is, and gotta keep mapping the tablet, blop. Uh, I'm not going to make it side view, I'm going to make it top down. So similarly to the original Venture game, you'll be like a really small sprite. And then there'll be different rooms of the castle of different shapes. And there'll be doors you can go in and guards patrolling in different areas. So just as an example, um, you know, there'll be little tiny guard sprites walking around and you'll run in and go into the room. So this is like kind of the zoomed out castle uh castle floor so maybe you're going higher up the tower a tower of a castle um like a game about winky um but it will have a different character and then once you go into a room then that room will be like that same shape um, and then I assume I'll probably just make this kind of your standard RPG 2D, I don't know what it's called, like three-fourths view down. Not isometric, but you can see the walls and stuff, like this picture frame and candle or something, I don't know. You can come in, like there could be carpet on the floor and stuff, and you just go collect the the treasure whatever that is that's supposed to be a treasure box and then there'll be 
enemies doing stuff. So there could be like guard dogs, but that looks like a rabbit. Guard rabbits. You come in, you get your treasure. And then you have to get out before the guards notice, so... After like, I don't know, 15 seconds or something? Oh, yeah. That's just because I was thinking like, I could reuse this character because technically she was supposed to be a thief before, and I kind of like her design. Um, so, yep, and then you go back out, and then once you finish a floor, um, maybe instead of just immediately closing the level and going to the next one, maybe there'll be like a staircase that opens up or something. Like maybe one of the things is you get a key for finding the last item and getting the heck up. So this is... dang it. I need a better USB cable because this isn't working right. Um, this is the in inside room. And then at the end, I guess there'd be like a a room with a boss in it. So maybe you come in here, and maybe it's like I don't know. The castle wizard is like, I have been called to stop you from stealing all the stuff. Rawr. Or maybe he can summon a uh, monster, a different monster. Maybe like the different characters in the rooms could just be different summonings that the castle wizard has made. Um, and then you just run around and shoot at it with your stuff. Boss fight! Stop getting in the garbage can! That is not for you. Hey, no! She took the paper from my muffin that I ate this morning. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, I, th I think I would like to have multiple uh, weapons. Because I do think that would make the game more interesting. Like, um, some of the th things you're finding are... Um, Treasures. Like, maybe some of it's just treasure for treasure's sake. Maybe some of it's weapons, so let's just put treasure. Things you can sell. Not necessarily that there'll be a game store, but something that is valuable that you go pawn off later. Um, so maybe she could start and not have weapons at first. Uh, and then, like, the first floor can be really easy, like, the monsters aren't very, um, smart or not very fast, kind of slow. Um, first floor... Or maybe it's, like, outside the castle and you're just kind of trying to get in and finding a, a key to get in. So, outside... The economics in one month. I can I can implement three levels with some basic weapon types as long as they're easy. <laughs> um, outside castle uh, need to get key. So items one, two, three, four. So one would be like the key of the castle to get inside. Um, Easy enemies, no weapons, uh, treasure, and then 
maybe on the second floor you find um, some kind of weapon or Okay, I don't want you to be able to use... I guess you could use it. It doesn't matter. Let's just make um, the first weapon something weak, like a shovel or something. <coughs> like, you can't throw... Like, it's not a projectile, you just have to be close to the enemy to, to hit him. So, shovel? That's what I'm thinking of if you're, like, in the castle gardens. I don't know what else there would be. Uh, second floor... So this would just be like the, I, I guess, make this level. This will be the castle interior. Um, medium enemies. And you'll find like maybe each thing has a two treasures. And then a key to the next floor. Okay, so then I'll think of a weapon in a minute. Third level. Let's say this is um, going up a tower, so. Hard enemies. Like these could be summoned. Uh, monsters. As you're getting closer and closer to the expensive treasure. Okay, so you get something close range. Um, maybe here you get something Maybe with like a short projectile distance, and then the other one could be like a long projectile distance. Um. <laughs> like you could get like a bow and arrow, but well, that would be a long distance, I guess. Uh. <laughs> yeah, let's make this maybe. Yeah, but s yeah, that could work. Or like this could be a knife or something like that, but this could have just a wide swinging arc or something. And then down here, you could find your laser necklace or something. Laser necklace. Which is a projectile, kind of. <laughs> Depending on how I program it. And, uh... I would say a key, and then there's like the boss. So you, there's the boss, you fight, and then get... a lot of treasure? Um, and then that would be like the end of the game. And then, um, <laughs> and then really, if someone wanted to modify the game, they could just like build their own level in tiled. I'm not planning on writing a map editor because there's a perfectly good 2D map editor called Tiled. Um, let me see if I have it. I do not have it currently installed. Is it in here? Yeah. I will install that. Uh, I would say, hey, that the main character is probably just from the same time period. And I unplugged my thing again. Um, I unplugged my thing again. Plug.
Don't attack me. Okay. Um, so I'm going to reuse my character, but I'm going to give her a better name, because I was young when I originally named her, and I was thinking as like of Cowboy Bebop when I named her, uh, but that name has other connotations these days, so we're going to give her a new name. And, I don't know, in my mind she's just like a, a really good thief because she's poor. <laughs> like, not because she's poor, but that's why she's a thief. Um, so, that's how she makes a living. And I'll like use the same kind of character design from t 11 years ago. <laughs> so that's basically what she looks like. With orange hair. Red, 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 you know. But I'm not going to use the old sprite, I'm going to make new sprites. Um, I like purple. Whee! And pants. So... Yeah. Let me look at my note thingy. Um, modifications. Other people can overwrite the maps to make their own levels. And of course it'll be open source so you can change that. Um, And then sound effects are going to be trouble, and music's going to be trouble, because I'm not great at doing either of those. But we'll manage. We'll figure something out. Maybe there can be some guest music person to make some music, but I also don't have much money to go like hire people for things. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that sounds good. Really, like, I... I don't know what else to do besides just getting started on artwork, I guess, because um, the stream is supposed to go on for like another hour, but got kind of an idea of what we're doing. Um, so I guess I could start on art. Let me see. Where's my... Let me take some screenshots. Too. Cats are cranky. So, um, I guess when I'm starting a game, what I first do is kind of build a, um, kind of a wireframe of, like, the layout of the game UI, um, or just kind of the, um, environments and graphics so I can get an idea of how big everything should be. So, this will probably be, like, a s kind of... 720p resolution. Um, so we use that as reference. So overall, uh, let's see what a 32 by 32 block looks like compared to that screen size. So that's pretty small, um, but that could work out. Honestly, I miss really low resolutions. <laughs> uh, I could make it half this resolution, I guess, but um, I don't want to have to deal with scaling things up, I guess. I don't know. A perk of this venture style game is that there's not going to be any screen scrolling. Um, and really, there's not going to be like gravity physics. Don't have to worry about that. It'll just be like your basic collision detection against walls. 
and stuff. Um, so, okay, so let's say these. this is going to be the castle wall. And we'll just... Uh, not, not rounded, not anti-aliased, please. Hmm. I don't know why it's doing that. We'll just add the pixels in. So, flip that on the opposite side, and then take that 32 by 32 block, and put that here. Put that in, and then... Oops. Also just move that across the entire way, so... I'm paying attention to the Y coordinate. This is 31. 31. If anyone uses GIMP, I am holding down the shift button to be able to draw a straight line. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I use the keyboard shortcut like shift B to go to fill tool. Okay, so that would be a border, um, and there would be, like, the ground, you know, whatever that's going to look like. I'm not going to make this just, like, boring gray. Uh, maybe the castle will be more bluish. I'm not sure. We'll, I'll try to figure out, like, an interesting visual style. Um, I'm not the best artist, but I'm okay. And then um, we'll just have different room shapes. So probably also use like 32 by 32 blocks to do that. But really, um, well, I guess if I'm using tiled, it's going to be grid based anyway. Not that anyone's really going to notice if I do the pixel art really well. I'm just going to mock up kind of in wherever spot I want. Um, but in the actual game. It would be aligned to a grid, so these would- oops. That's supposed to be a room. They wouldn't just be at any arbitrary XY position, they'd be aligned to a grid. But we don't care about that right now. We are just making an example of what it might look like. Um, and then we'll just flip that, and there'd be some sort of doorway, so... I don't know. This is not indicative of what the art style is going to look like, this is just kind of figuring out dimensions. Like, there's no reason to go making the art right away if you don't know what size everything is going to be. So that's an example room, and there'll be two doors in each room also, just to make that easier. We'll move that over here. Okay. So just as a really basic example, you can do that. Let's make the ground. And, um then your character art would be pretty small, I guess, so... Um, like, we won't exactly have just like a tiny red dot, but... Um, it'll be like a small version of the sprite and a big version of the sprite. So... And right now I'm just drawing with the mouse because, I don't know, I guess I could draw with my tablet, but it's annoying me right now. And in the overworld in Venture, you can't shoot your bow and arrow or anything, so this will just be like, you'll be sneaky and getting around. So you're just walking around, and then there'll be guards, the guards will be like the same size. Um, oops. 
And I'll just make it in gray. There, that's a guard, right? And then that gives me some idea of like, this character is... Oh, crap. 35 by 71, so... Like, maybe, um... <laughs> I mean, it could really technically be any size. I tend to like using powers of two, but that's not important. <laughs> I don't need to do that. Whatever. It used to be important to use powers of 32 as your size for images, but that's... it's not 20 years ago anymore. It is 2019. I can make images whatever size I want. And then we'll also need to think about the HUD as well. So, um, in Venture, what do you got? You have your points? I guess I would just probably put that as your dollar amount, like You've stolen this worth of goods. Um, your lives, we can implement lives. I know it is 2019, but that'll at least give you some some tension, I guess, of trying to not get caught. Uh, and then the game over screen if you get caught too much! Oh no! Um, so let's say you have... Well, also, uh... <laughs> Probably not modern dollars. Let's say, like, it shows it in gold or some other value. So, you've stolen 10,000 gold worth of things. And... In the original Linkseon game, I just have this up here with your lives. But we can make something a little nicer looking than that. So, we'll just kind of... Yeah. I don't know, should we use this stereotypical heart thing? This is going to be public domain graphics, so people might need hearts in their games. So that could be five hearts, because we'll be nice, just like they were. Um, now, do we want the HUD overlaid and taking up screen space, or do we want to make this part not the play area and just kind of shrink it down? Which would make it feel really kind of even more claustrophobic unless I shrunk everybody down even more. Um, and so on. And that's why I'm prototyping with rough art first, instead of uh, actually going in and doing graphics. Um, and then up here it also has like a the name of the room, so we'll just call this like, I don't know, first floor. Or I guess depending on what country you're in, the first floor, the the ground level is ground level, and the first floor is the second level, but for me, the second level is the one not on the ground. Um, another thing I'm aesthetically into is, like, side HUDs. Um, let me see if I can find a DOS game. So not like the bottom HUD part, um, but here I like, I know you don't get much screen space, but I really like these. <laughs> um, I think, didn't Jane of the Jungle have a side HUD also? Could be a zombie castle, we could do that. Um, Boop, 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 boop. These are not DOS game. Yeah, this one has a side HUD on one side. That's kind of ugly, but you know, DOS role playing game. I just really like DOS art. Ugh, DOS role playing game screenshot. <laughs> Highly art, weird color palettes. Okay, well, I'm not really seeing what I wanted to see. This one kind of has side huds a little bit. Those are kind of ugly. 
I used to play this game. I used to be so scared of that game. I don't remember why. That has side HUD, or nothing's being displayed, but just screen real estate being taken up. Side HUD. All of that. Weird. Okay. Side HUDs. Um, but I'm not really going to go with just the you got a small view of the gameplay window. Cat, why? Why are you doing that? Luna. <clears throat> okay. So that could be an option. Um, I could make a side HUD to put this information in. And that would make things a little better as far as... I feel like if I just squished all this stuff down, it would look really claustrophobic because you would only have... Um, let me see if I can make it do that. I can't see... Which one is... Re oh, there it is. So if it was flatter like this, that just doesn't feel like a lot of room. But if I resized it like that, that feels like it would be acceptable. Uh, especially since it's widescreen. And so I am more of a fan of the, the side HUD here. So let's... that's okay. The hearts need to be resized. Uh, auto crop T content. It can be whatever. Um, the map name. Oh, actually, let me think. Let me look up one more DOS game. Um, does that have a side HUD? No, it has a bottom HUD. Well, I also really love this game. <laughs> but we'll just have that. And first floor can be kind of small. And then. Um, we could just have that treasure list. Uh, let me die real quick. Oh, I have no treasure right now. But <clears throat> we can just take that sort of treasure list of however many pieces of treasure you're going to collect and put that here on the side. And that can be kind of like your um, thingy camera view. Uh, I don't understand the question. Move this guy out here. And... I mean, really, this score counter is, like, not the most important piece of information. Um... But I don't know what what is the most important piece of information. I don't know. Stolen ten thousand gold. What else? Um. Eh. I mean, what else do you possibly need? Uh, I could put in like a wanted system or something. Like the guards might try to chase you more or. I mean, it would only be a little bit extra programming. Or um, maybe if you are in their radius of sight, maybe they become more aggressive. I could put like the little Metal Gear solid timer thingy in there. <laughs> yeah, um... <coughs> But I kind of would prefer the one screen approach just to really seem more like those old DOS games. And of course it could always be expanded, um, but I just enjoy not working with camera controls. <laughs> I've done that before, like my other games have screen scrolling, but I think just personally I would really like to just go into different rooms. And it can even be made smaller where you have all these different rooms and you're still really, like, even more tiny and, uh, trying to look for treasure. Um... Where did my thingy go? Oh, 
Over here? Over here? Nope. There. Um. So maybe this could be like spotted or something else like that. Possibly like hidden, spotted. Maybe you can have like a ranking based on if you completely avoided detection or not. And then these guys could have like a view radius because that would be the easiest to program. <laughs> and that wouldn't necessarily be visible, but that could just be programmed in and then part of the debug information. Um, but I don't want to have to program in looking at walls or like not being able to see past walls. So that might not be something I implement because we're keeping it simple. <laughs> yeah, let's get rid of line of sight. Um, or I mean, maybe if you're just within this radius, like you're pretty close to them so they can see you. So you would really try to avoid being close to them completely. Let me also add that to my notes. So, um, I know these are kind of unorganized, but I'll clean it up later. Um, maybe have rank based on whether you were spotted on a floor. Um, guards have a small radius of notice. Might chase if they see you. So, I feel like I need more information. What information do I put down here? I got a notification. I've gotten two Twitch achievements. I don't know what that means. I am, Twitch is very confusing. I do not completely understand how it works. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. I'm going to close those windows. I don't need that. Put that over here. Don't need that. Close that. I am looking... I just opened something that said something and I forgot and I wasn't paying attention. But, okay. Um, so that would be like the outer um, screen for... I need to come up with a word because it's not like a world map because it's not the entire world but maybe just floor, map, and then a different kind of view for um, the room itself. So room, and a, they can each have different color themes and stuff. But in this case, they would be um, just bigger art in general. So we're gonna make that the doorways. Example. Uh, but with better art for the doors. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we could put that like, so here's the treasure and then we can put weapon and generally graphically would be better, but we could put weapon and like an icon of the weapon. Shovel. Okay, um, over here. Oh no, my web camera has frozen. Uh, well, it might have gotten unplugged. Let me see if I have a different webcam. Because everything is broken. There we go. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so for the room, these would have walls. 
Uh, I removed the stars. I was thinking of maybe like just tracking how um, noticed you were, but I can do a better graphical representation of that than just stars because that doesn't really make sense. Okay, so let's say this is the room. We'll have some more visual information and maybe the, uh, this would not be too hard, but I could just basically copy paste the tiled map. I can export a tiled map to an image and take that image and shrink it down and just throw it in there or something like that. Um, so that the room just looks like a very tiny version of the room um, when you are walking around the world map. So let's say I'm thinking like have a fireplace and like not necessarily every room, just kind of like is having a more interesting visual style. Um, this can have like tapestries on the wall and you can come in. So in the other area, you are that size, but you'll be bigger here. So that's the old size. But then once you're inside, I don't know what it would be. Mm -hmm. I could really just resize that sprite and then use that as reference. So we'll make that taller. Crop to content. And then I wouldn't just blow up the sprite. I'd probably have like a top down view and like a running around view. And then in this case, um, I'd make collision detection at her feet level. So we'll talk about collision detection later on. Um, but then she would be that size. Let me erase that. And then the guards would also basically be that same size too. So. And maybe there'd be a, the guard that comes in from the outside whenever you've been taking too long in a specific area. Um, but also magical dudes, magical things, like an evil frog. Frog demon? I don't know. Figure something out. Yellow eyes. So each room can have like three or four of whatever that enemy type is. And then each room will also have some sort of treasure. So you can just say like, here's a gem, but you have to collect it and then run away. that in. So then the strategy would be, you know, not getting caught because you, you die instantly, I guess, because that's what the other game does. And, you know, if you have limited lives and you die instantly when you get hit or whatever, uh, then that makes it a little more entertaining. That's a really big shovel. <laughs> but you could like swing that and just attack things nearby. So I guess I'll save this mock-up and we'll save this mock-up. Uh, yeah, the feet uh, have red shoes. I can change those, but I'll make the carpet a lighter color or a darker color, one of the two. There we go. So it would look something like that. At least this gives me an idea of sprite sizes. So this would be 141 pixels high, 60 pixels wide, about, it'll be 
bigger than that with animation since she's moving her arms everywhere when she walks. Just like this. Not like normal. Um, and then like the wall art, you know, I can, I'll make it a usable size. Is that really only 14 pixels? Oh no, it is around 90 pixels high. Um, so it could be something like that, just 90 by 90 pixels for the walls, or I can make it smaller and um, maybe make it 32 by 32 there, and then it just tiles, and then then I can make um, the sprite art look a little bit nicer, the tile art, so like you could have right or 45 degree angles um, and just generally have more interesting walls. This one would be like just here's a square room, but we could add um, you know additional walls. So I could do like this. Like let's say there is a wall here. Oops, that's the wrong tool. And then I don't know what layer I was just messing with. This I didn't name my layers. So there's a wall, and then you'd have to walk around it, and so on. So, well, that's the mock-up. <laughs> and I guess I will just maybe start messing around with the uh, character art, character sprite, um, and maybe figure out kind of a a style. Where is that layer? Where is she? There she is. Okay. Sprite mockup. So, this on its own. Not the best looking sprite. I mean, it could pass for maybe like a retro game. Um, there's different styles we could use. We could have like black outlines. We could have just dark colored outlines based on what the inner color is. Um, we'll just mess around with some stuff. Let me get my tablet working again so I can do this a little nicer. Um, okay, so my my wrist rests right where the cable is attached to the freaking tablet. Um, so that's fun. And I'm not sure if it's the cable's fault or if it's the, just the tablet is really old and that port sucks and is dying. But I also, this tablet works in Linux. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't have the um, like sensitivity layers and stuff or sensitivity feature available. So that, that's lame, but it works as a mouse, basically. So we'll do that, and we'll kind of figure out how to shade. Um, okay, so... Here, actually, let me put the hair on a different level. If we wanted to do <clears throat> black outlines, uh, it could look like this. Oops. No, why did it do that? And, oops. So that could look cool. Um, I am a fan of like very pronounced lines. Um, let's look at face. And I can do several of these just to kind of get some style ideas. She doesn't necessarily need a face or like a mouth, but just, just a little cutie. 
And then if we're gonna shade the head, we could just kind of make it style shaded a little, I guess. I don't know what the proper term is. I don't do the fancy anti-aliasing shading. So sorry, world. Um, grab the hair, grab that color. Shade it that way and take a light color and add the shininess. I don't know. Um, so that could work for that. I'll just do this entire thing and then maybe do several different um, examples. Okay, so let me grab the face color and this will be the torso. So, I'll just make that there, and she needs her, well, actually, if she gets her choker at the end of the game, she doesn't need it right now. So that could be, this could be the prequel to Lynxion. <laughs> okay, and then, yeah, doing lines is annoying. We'll, we'll work on that. And I unplug my tablet again because it's so great. Yay, yay, yay. I also need to find some music I can play while doing art, but I'll be um, editing the other videos so it'll be less boring. Okay. So, let's see. She has plenty of room for different details being such a big sprite. Oops, I forgot. These are on different layers so I can make the black outlines easier. And that. And pants. And I just unplugged my tablet again. usually do that when it's under a different layer and then fill in choose and I am just gonna copy paste this shoe because I am not great at some symmetry um, the sprites generally look better if they're not super symmetric but it'll also look weird if the shoes aren't um, well, let's do arms and so that also can go behind the clothes and then we'll just make some arms and I don't know make some pixel fingers that doesn't look great <laughs> mitten hand I don't know Really, fingers are longer than that. Um, oops, not that. That looks really stupid. <laughs> uh, mm, I can't just put her hands behind her back for the entire game. So, I don't know, usually I go with something a little bit more blobby blobby hands so you look at it and you're like yeah that's a hand but you don't have to think about it very hard okay so let's add the outlines so usually I'm sure there's a better way to do this and I've been meaning to make a GIMP um, plugin to do this for me but what I do is I basically take that layer I copy it, I paste it onto a new layer, um, I take a really big black brush, I paint over it, please go below, I copy paste and go up, down, left, right, and then that gives me that black outline. 
There has to be a better way, or I could write a better way, but I have not. So I guess it depends on if I am doing a lot of game art. So grab that. Nope. Black. Up, down, left, right. And then I can flatten all of that as well. So merge down. And then you can adjust the colors. Pants. And that's the neck. So. Did I just unplug my tablet? I did. I'm going to use my mouse because I can't draw with my mouse. Back when I used to make animations, I would always draw with the mouse. So it's just less ideal. Shoes. And this is just a example prototype sprite style anyway. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing on her. Um, well, I forgot two things. She normally has like a sash, I guess. And I can just manually add the black outline. So there's that. <clears throat> I'm going to shade this a little bit differently. And I also forgot her um, wrist warmers. I am just like adhering to that original art uh, that I designed her with, with the original design. I'm not taking liberties, I am following what is the original correct thing. Okay, we'll do that. <clears throat> Oops. I think my fill... nope, nope, okay, I'll check that uh, later. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. I selected the correct stuff, but I was on the wrong layer. I'm going to do the similar thing here. Good enough, right? Oops, oops. And then over here, it's about shaded it. So that is a potential art style. Um, I guess I will save that as example one. Um, hmm. I'm gonna look really quick on a website with my old art on it. Throwing apples as a ranged weapon? That could work. Like if you like steal them out of an apple tree in the uh, castle gardens. Let me see. Ugh. DeviantArt's changed its layout and now it's modern. <laughs> and hard to navigate. Yeah, you can throw apples. Also, it resized my user image. This is not loading fast. This is loading very slow. I don't know what is things. Why did my game name bring up a lot of pictures of dudes? I don't know.
Okay, well, I can't find the thing I wanted to find, but it's fine. Whatever. Uh, okay, so that's one example. Um, you can try a different style. You keep the same kind of reference. And mm, let me get my tablet hooked up again, just for the sketchy part, I guess. Maybe, or it's just not. It's not gonna turn on at all. Okay, it's on. Uh, also, while I'm thinking about it, do apple throwing. Okay. So another style, um, just put that over there. Okay. <clears throat> have, oops. Actually, let me make that a darker color. So I'm going to do this one with like um, just lines that are a darker color of what the internal color is. And I have to use the shift key <clears throat> when I'm drawing it with the mouse to make my lines look okay. Eh. So then like the orange um, line color would also be kind of a dark brown. I should have put that on a separate layer. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's put this under here. And fill that stuff up. And make this come down. Um, I am less of a fan of this style, I guess. I don't know. We'll see how it ends up. It's been a while since I've thought about pixel art. Uh, otherwise, I might like go look at some other games and figure out what kind of looks good to me now this day and age. <coughs> Excuse me. Oops. Oops. Did I? Yep. Congratulations, Rachel. Wrong layer. It's the wrong layer again, but that's okay. We're okay. Um, and then really the. I wonder if she has like blue eyes. I guess. Um, we could do all sorts of different eye types, but I don't know. I like those cute black dot eyes, but we can try some other stuff, so. I'll just copy that and paste it and adjust it some more. So those, those could be cute. Um, put some gradient in there. And if my tablet was working, I could also do more of a hand-drawn style, um, like I do enjoy also just drawing art as my sprites. And the only game I think I have right now doing that, besides the visual novels, is this one. So these guys aren't pixely sprites, they are hand-drawn. So I could do that too, uh, but we'll see what my tablet is like. Okay. Um, base. So mouths are always kind of hard in pixel art for me. Because if you like, it just makes their lips look really big if you even just add one pixel of lip. 
Or that looks like she just ate a jelly sandwich. I don't know. That looks really stupid. And that, that makes her lips look really big. So I usually just use a line. And her nose, I usually just like using kind of like a simple nose like that. Um, and you can shade again, so shade under the hair. We'll need some eyebrows, I guess. <laughs> And, I don't know if she can have some eyelashes. That's pretty cute, right? Shade the hair. That's not the good, right shade, whatever. Eh, I don't know. I don't like the hair very much, but maybe if I, maybe instead of doing a really contrasty line color, it could be a softer contrast. Um, so it could be like that, or I could um, make the line color different colors based on which part it is um, outlining. So I could make that kind of lighter around lighter parts of the hair. I don't really like how that looks though. Uh, I'll just try I take this and do a little lighter and then a little lighter over here maybe. And then now her mouth looks weird so or maybe if I just make that But I'll keep keep on with this for now. I'll just kind of flesh it out. I have some shading in the eyes too. We can make that lighter. We got 15 minutes, so this is probably the only other um, example I'll be able to make for now. But I could also make some more tomorrow and post them up on like the Patreon page and. People can vote, I guess. I could make a poll on which uh, style of art is the best and, you know, have more than two options, but... Okay, purple. I would also like to try a hand drawing. And I was going to try to search for some old, um, really cute sprite art I had done of this character. Uh, but DeviantArt is slow and not great, apparently. I do miss having a place like DeviantArt to go to frequently. Um, I miss those days a lot, but, you know, I don't know. No one uses it. Everyone just uses the same four websites, unfortunately. Grab brown. Um, and I mean, since we're working with this sprite, uh, do I still have that folder open? Yeah, we can just look at the original. And she is also a public domain sprite, but, and I was very proud of her when I first made her. Uh, I thought it looked really cool. I still kind of think this looks pretty cool, but I feel like the walking looks wonky. Um, but yeah. So that one also, see, it has the different shading in the line art. Um, so like brown, but then also kind of lighter, lighter brown here, darker brown here. Um, but it doesn't look like I did that for all the spots of the sprite, so I don't know. Uh, let's see. Take that in. And then these. And shoes.
Okay. Make that a little better. Copy that. Copy that, I guess. And we'll exclude that part. And copy and paste. I don't think that did anything. Oops. We'll try that again. Okay, we'll try that again. I see a floating layer. I don't see any. I'm copying on the wrong layer, aren't I? Shoe? No, that is a shoe. Cop copy? Okay, why? The threshold is too high. Copy this shoe and flip it. And then we can add the layers and stuff on top again. And lastly, the arms. So grab the that line color and we'll just give her another ball hand again, I guess. That works, right? That's okay. Oops. Am I on the face layer? Why can't it read my mind on the colors that I want? I don't know. Or the layer that I want. It should read my mind. I'm going to put that on a new layer and put that on the bottom. And then we can merge it down. And we can shade. I think this one looks a little bit less robotic. This one looks a little bit more fluid. -y. But I can also try some other styles. I would really like to try some other styles. Do, 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 do. And if DeviantArt would load, I could show some other sprite styles I've done. Though most of them have been like more lower resolution, so it can be kind of hard to make larger pixel art look nice. And I don't know. Again, I just haven't done a lot of pixel art recently, I guess. Um, that might be too, too dark. Eh. I don't actually know how to shade, I just kind of wing it. So I assume the pants are over the shoe, so there should be a shadow there. And that the shirt is over the arm, so there should be a shadow there. Oops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Key there. Oops, not that. And down here. But this needs to be corrected. Because that looks weird. Okay. So there's another example sprite. Um did I not say that one is a pink uh, sprite model one? Okay, so I think she's cute. If I modified it um, some more, I would like this sprite more than this one. Eh. Eh. I kind of like, um, I don't know, the curve here and that side could be curvy. She looks a little bit more 
cartoony in this one than, than the other one. But... Well, we have six minutes left. Less than six minutes left. And um, we've... I mean, I guess we got a good start. Um, we have a theme. I'm just working on art style now. I have kind of a, a mock-up of what the game layout will look like, the game screen. Um, so I guess the next set, I could either um, do all of the game art next, or I could do the game programming with temporary art and then replace that temporary art further down the road. Um, but really I need to make a list of like all of the assets I need to make in order to do either of those so I can make temporary assets. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be the project for this month. Um, hmm, hmm. um I'm going to post this video up on YouTube and PeerTube, um, which PeerTube is like a distributed, uh, non-proprietary, like, spinoff of YouTube. Like, it's, it's not related, but... Um, you know, just like how Mastodon is an alternative to Twitter, uh, Di Diaspora is an alternative to Facebook, uh, OpenTube, PeerTube uh, is kind of that alternative to YouTube. So I've been trying to use um, more open source distributed network things. They're not as user friendly, but I figure the first step is just to get some content on those. Um, because no one's going to quit cold turkey if there's nothing to look at on a different platform. So yeah, these will, this video will go up on YouTube and PeerTube. And then the middle month ones will also be there. And I'll be posting post updates onto Patreon. Kind of like a dev log uh, with screenshots and polls and other things. So if you would like to participate in that, I don't know, I have these old videos here for some reason. If you would like to participate in leaving feedback for things, of course you can comment in the YouTube video or the PeerTube videos and I'll check it out and see what you got to say. But if you want to have more sway, then give me a dollar maybe? <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks so much, ShproTrue for watching this entire time and the three to seven miscellaneous viewers who have also joined us <laughs> um and i look forward to making like the more kind of clean cut uh videos of like how do you do maps how do you do collision detection and all of that um and you know uh let's look at the youtube channel i guess and Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to close this out, but here's the YouTube channel you could subscribe to to see the uh, coming videos and everything else. So there's that. You can also go to the HIO page and look at the, some of the games and zines I've worked on. And most everything is free, but you can donate if you want to. I currently am only working part time for 10 bucks an hour. So, yeah, it would be cool to make more things and not have to be a professional corporate programmer. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have to go get ready for my friend Brad's birthday party. So, thanks everyone for watching. Um, I feel I want to, like, I don't have a catchphrase for saying goodbye, and when I say thanks everybody and I'll see y'all later bye is what I want to say, but that's somebody else's catchphrase, so I don't know. I guess I could say, Gis la revido, which is Esperanto for see you later, or until the next viewing. So, Gis la revido, internet. Goodbye. Oh no, where's the button? There, oh, I found my mouse, okay.